Welcome to Podcasting Unlocked, a mini series with me, host Paul Banks. I've been podcasting for five years and I've met so many business owners who want to get involved with podcasting and just don't know where to start. They don't know where to host it, how to host it, what setup they need, what equipment they need, how to manage their guests, and have no idea about process. If that sounds like you, this show's for you. Come join us each week for the next few weeks as we discuss podcasting unlocked. Hello, uh, thanks Paul for that lovely intro. It's nice. It's nice having the intro videos played by themselves now on StreamYard. It's brilliant because when you're running this by yourself, it's really hard trying to get mixed between all the different settings and videos and stuff. Um, it's just one of those things with complexity, right? Um, and that's why we're here. That's why we're talking about podcasting. Because I know from speaking to lots of you out there, lots of my clients, lots of my friends, business owners, that there's so many people that are on the fence about starting a podcast. And there's misconceptions, there's myths, there's some very bad advice out there. And we're here to dispel all of that, make it simple for people. And I'm doing this in conjunction with launching our own podcast enablement service. So this stream isn't to point you to my service and go, you must work with us. And here's why, right? It is to help you get off the fence. I can only help a certain amount of people per month, right? We're only aiming at three business owners to work with. I've already got one. I've got conversations with several others in the pipeline. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is there are so many people out there who are super passionate, intelligent, creative, who want to launch a podcast, but I have no idea where to start. Last week, we covered why you should be launching your podcast. So if you haven't seen that, I will drop the notes down below so you can go back and watch that video again. It's on our YouTube channel, as well as being a live stream here on LinkedIn. This is live, so that's important to shout out. I want you to come to me with your challenges, questions, what you're, what you're worried about, what keeps you up at night around podcasts, right? Maybe it doesn't keep you up at night, but you know, why haven't you launched your podcast yet? What are the, what are the worries that you have? And I'd love to just spend five, 10 minutes at the end going through any Q and A that you guys have got, because this is for you. It's not for me, I know this stuff, right? I've been doing this for five, six years, like I said in the intro, I just wanna help people decide, is podcasting for me? Is it not for me? And if not, be clear and happy with that. Or if it is, how do you get started? So this episode is all about why podcasts fail. And believe me, they do. More often than not. Far more often than not. So I think it's something like 92% of podcasts never make it past 20 episodes. 73% could be making these numbers up. It's a large amount. 73% of podcasts don't make it past episode 10. Wow. That blows my mind because every podcast I've run has gone past episode 10. I've made it my personal goal. Um, and that being said, some podcasts are limited run series, right? Like I know people that have done like a six episode series. That was all it was ever intended. It's not really a podcast, although you can put it out as a podcast and it would be included in these stats and figures. Um, so as it says down below, do ask your questions as we go along. Um, I'm just going to update one of these banners, um, because I realize there we go. Right. That's done. Um, I realize I hadn't done that before we started the show. I see it's hard trying to do everything by yourself. Good reason why podcasts fail because we do still as a business owner, try and do everything ourselves. So, um, yeah, it says here, I'm looking at some stats here, it's got 50% of podcasts stop after 14 episodes with a high number of podcasters dropping off within their first year. But that's understandable, right? And we're going to go through why in a moment. Um, however, there are over 5 million podcasts globally. 5 million! That's a lot of hours of, of advice and support and storytelling, right? But the vast majority of those are actually inactive because they're not releasing episodes anymore. They were historically launched and it's gone off the boil for whatever reason. However, the global podcast market continues to grow with, with an estimated 
30 billion dollars being spent on it in 2024 alone 30 billion right and as we kind of mentioned in the first episode there are two routes to go for podcasting right one is let's make big money out of advertising by making a show that is super popular putting a lot of money behind it and that's generally an enterprise business podcast right those guys can compete in that top level space because they can afford to bring in well-known guests well-known hosts premium editing premium advertising and you can spend as much money as you want on advertising on a podcast to get it where it needs to be so somebody like stephen bartlett i guarantee they spend an absolute fortune right i'm not here to discuss that side of podcasting right that's not what we're here for what we're here to discuss is b2b business podcasting where you as a business owner know that you can use that podcast to generate leads to raise your credibility in your industry create awareness of your business almost as a side effect of having the podcast um, so let's have a look at some of the common reasons why podcasts fail and i'm going to walk you through my take on on those as well as we go so um, first up top reason oh no i'm going to go i'm going to go and reverse it right i'm going to reverse it um, let's go to number 10. So number 10 is limited audience engagement. This is actually one of my favorites. And it's the same reason why people aren't consistent on LinkedIn. So people aren't consistent on LinkedIn because they don't get comments and likes. And they assume that means their content isn't being well received and nobody likes it. So they stop doing it. Because we need that endorphin rush, those dopamine hits to get us through to the next post, right? No, stop it. Stop it. Stop worrying about it. Um, I've oh, said this in the first episode, right? I've never yet had a client buy from me who has engaged with any of my posts or comments. And the same goes for your podcast. It's not about getting that huge engagement from day one or day 20 or day 90. And in fact, I talk to people who say that, you know, you don't really get going with your podcast till you hit episode 100. Wow, right? I know several people who are now over episode 200 and still have some challenges around this number nine so i'm going to go down the, going to go up the charts oh, like this yeah I'm, I'm old enough to remember top of the pops right number nine burnout podcast burnout is absolutely real for many of us who want to launch a podcast as a business owner i'm going to throw in an extra thing here which is we're adhd Lots of people I speak to are, whether you know it or whether you don't know it, maybe you're just neurodiverse, right? Um, ADHD is something specific, but maybe it's just the neurodiversity. But your podcast has become your shiny object and you want to do it, but you're also doing a billion other things in your business. There's a lot of time and effort involved in creating a podcast, in getting it going, in getting it off the ground initially. You do if you do things right you do get to a point where things become more simple and routine and it's manageable but getting to that point requires accountability consistency grit determination and you've got to really try to get there and what i'd also say is if you are not enjoying what your podcast is about if you've created it for the wrong reasons targeted it in the wrong way and you're not seeing any results whatsoever then that's going to be even more magnified, right? You've got to be podcasting about something you're passionate about, something you enjoy helping people with. You've got to enjoy, to a certain extent, being that podcast host. You can grow into it. So don't worry if you don't enjoy it initially. You grow into it. You've got to get to the point where you enjoy it. Um, and if you're talking about content that is just appealing to your ideal audience, but, but you don't really care too much about, you're going to dry up. You're not gonna. You're not gonna keep doing it. Um, and uh, there's there's lots and lots of great, like that is a whole episode on its own, right? Burnout. It's real. Stay small. Grow organically. Do one thing at a time. Get it in place. Build it into your routine. Then do something else. And just keep adding to it over time until you are satisfied that you're doing as much as you want to do with your podcast. Stop. I like this, Erin Baker. You will be proud of me to say this stop shudding all over yourself right 
your podcast is your podcast. You do it as you want. Right, number eight, lack of differentiation. Mm, big one. I struggle with this quite a lot. Um, there's five million active podcasts. Well, is it five million? It's five million podcasts globally. It's not all active, right? Five million podcasts globally and pretty much whatever space you want to be in, there is already somebody else there. And I've spoke to a few people who said, I want to do a podcast, but um, there's already loads of people doing podcasts in my space. My answer is good, because if there's loads of podcasts in your space, then they're probably all doing the same thing. Especially if you, you know, I talk to people in professional services all the time, and that's, that's quite hard to get your head around how you can be different in that space. And honestly, have a conversation with ChatGPT and ask it to ideate some ideas for how your podcast can be different. That's a great place to start brainstorming with ChatGPT. That's what it's for. Um, and I did that before launching Market Pulse, which is why we brought in the, the two questions that I ask every guest, which is what's one marketing tactic or practice you wish people would just stop doing? And what's one thing you wish they would start doing that nobody seems to have cottoned on to? Um, so that's number eight. Number seven, um, your niche is too broad or unclear. That's a great one. That's a great one. And I think my own podcast does suffer from this a little bit. Um, so again, learning, <laughs> learning as we go, right? That's, that's another thing that podcasts are about for me is that constant learning experience and getting my guests on the show. So where you are trying to cover too many topics, your audience is too broad, so you can't speak to any single section of that audience, and you're trying to create um, a more general podcast, you become vanilla, you get lost in the noise. So make sure that you can create, a, like the end goal is to create community, right? Like a loyal following. If you're not creating that, then, then you're not targeted enough. And that's not easy to do. Nobody's saying any of these things are easy to fix, but these are things that you need to be aware of when you're getting involved in it. You're thinking out whether to get started. Oh, number six, undefined success metrics. That's a hard one, right? That's a really tough one because a lot of people tend to falsely um, target themselves on the wrong metrics as well, I think. So, you know, people are like, oh, I want to get 100 downloads for episode one and... And then, like, by month six, I want to be winning awards. And, like, really? Um, no. Like, you, you'd probably be lucky if you get 20 downloads on your first episode. Or episode one gets, like, 75 downloads and then episode two tanks because people have lost interest. Because probably episode one was all your mates and your mum. <laughs> Hi, mum. Um, right, so, that, that, so defining the right success metrics... And it doesn't have to be numbers. It can be, um, you know, we've spoken to three people who've listened to the show this month when we were talking with potential clients or, or things like that. Or actually, maybe it's we want to find one business partner from the first six guests we have on the show. We want to turn one of those into a business partner who can help us find our ideal clients. Maybe it's, you know, well, in the first year, I want to turn three guests into clients as we go, you know, and you can have this lovely organic conversation about the podcast. You never, ever run the podcast just to generate leads. It's a byproduct. It happens organically. That's where the magic is. If you try and force it, you will stuff up your own podcast. So don't do that. Undefined success metrics. Very important. Number five, failure to engage the audience. So you've got to land with your audience. You've got to connect with them and have them see value in it. Um, you've got to be giving things away that they don't normally get to see, that they don't normally get anywhere else. And that's entertainment, education, inspiration. All of those things do really well as podcasts. But you've got to be able to engage with that audience and find how to create some interaction. Again, not easy to do unless you're putting money behind things, which is why it works quite well going out from a LinkedIn personal profile and promoting it there, because then that's much more likely to start gaining that interaction. Number four, right, we're starting to get in the, we're in the top five now, right? These are the exciting ones. Giving up too soon. As with a lot of marketing, podcasting is a long-term game. 
my podcast starting to hit its stride past 30 episodes. It's nowhere near done, but like I'm starting to get people wanting to appear on the show. I've got the rhythm. I'm comfortable with the topics. I'm starting to feel more comfortable on the subject area. Um, all of those sorts of things are, are all things you've got to consider. But you've got to take the time to build a customer, a listener base, right? Or a, or a viewer base, depending on where you're putting it or how you're, how you're promoting it. Have that tenacity and grit. Like, don't commit to a few episodes. Commit to the podcast or don't, don't do it. Like, you can change things and tweak things as you go. You can reinvent it. Um, but you need to have that patience and persistence. Number three, big one poor audio quality and this goes for video as well right on a video podcast on youtube audio is still king i'll say that again even on video audio quality is king and it takes a while it takes experimentation to find the right mic i quite happily recommend this bad boy here everybody thinks i podcast for this one Right. And I do it on purpose because I like people to go, oh, what kind of mic do you use? I go, I use this one. Right. And it's a, a Rode Wireless Go 2. And it's not cheap, but it's only as expensive as some of these guys. All right. Um, this one's a uh, £120 new, I believe it was. I didn't get it new. I got it refurbed. Uh, which is a great point. Like there's loads of decent podcasting mics refurbed on things like eBay and stuff other marketplaces do exist um and these ones i got these ones i got these these wireless lav mics uh second hand with a charging case cost me 130 pound and i have tried loads of these i've i've gone through blue yeti i've gone through roads i've gone through wireless wireless lav mics i've gone through wired lav mics none of them give the results that i get with this and it's effortless i don't have to tinker with it i don't have to mess about with it it just works. It's brilliant. There's a transmitter unit. There's a receiver unit. The quality of sound is crystal clear. There is no compression, which means you get cut off at a certain volume level and you lose some of the detail of your voice. There's none of that. It records the whole thing. It gives a really crystal clear raw input back to your editing system, which means you can do loads of really cool things with it. Can't stress audio quality enough. Number two inadequate marketing and that's both host and guest so host side people worry that i'm going to bombard my audience with too much of this podcast my general suspicion is that people don't post enough in the first place right so if you want to be seen you your your average post on linkedin gets seen by 10 percent of your audience and the rest of it's made up by second and third degree connections which is great because second and third degree connections where the magic is. Um, just a reminder as well. Oh, I think I'm lagging a little bit. So excuse me if my, my stream lags. Um, just remind, we are live. I want people to ask questions. So we get to the end of this. I'd love to see if there's any questions and answers for people who are, who are watching along at home. Please do let me know what your thoughts are. Um, so yeah, inadequate marketing. Um, you're probably already not posting enough as it is. Podcasting gives you a plethora, loads of content to be able to get out whenever you want. And so you can be much more active in your space. And look, you're not selling anything. It's a podcast. You're sharing help and advice and thoughts. As long as the, the content is half decent, people will absorb it and take it on board. And it gets you in front of them, puts you front of mind, creates awareness call to actions, making sure that you are directing people to where you want them to listen of you and giving them an easy option as to what you want them to do when they get there. Please subscribe. Please give us a review. And that can change all the time. But thinking about that, what do you want them to do next? But then also getting your guests to promote the show as well. A lot of people wrongly suspect that all the marketing will be done by the podcast host and his company or the team and that they don't need to do anything. So I set those expectations quite early doors that this only really works if both of us cross pollinate our audience and help our own audience see the content from both sides. So I'm gonna post some out, I'm gonna send you some clips, I'm gonna give you some 
potential posts that you can put out on LinkedIn. I'm going to make it really easy and simple for you as a guest to promote my show. And in return, I expect you to, to help me do it. I'm not charging you anything for this. You're getting, you know, a, a, there's an element of reciprocity here, right? Like I'm doing something for you. I'm adding value. I'm helping you. Please help me back. Still, some people won't. <laughs> like, okay, like you can't win every battle, but marketing doesn't mean you have to pay for um, paid media adverts and, and things like that. Doesn't mean you need sponsorship. It just means that you need to collaborate with other podcasts it means you need to help make it easy for people to spread the word and you need to be in all the places where your audience want to listen or watch remember some people want to watch it some people want to listen to it in the car some people want a mix of both i would always advise do video if you're doing audio podcasting record it even if you don't use it yet you might one day Drum roll. Oh, I've got a drum roll on here. I think I do. Uh, oh. oh have, they, have they removed the sound effects? Oh. There you go. Drum roll. Uh, don't know even if that'll even come over on the microphone, but there we go. Um, number one reason that podcasts fail is a lack of consistency. And I think a lack of consistency is a, a symptom of a bigger problem. I'll explain in a moment. So lack of consistency. Most podcasts fail because they don't release regular episodes, right? Um, we release two this week, none next week, one the week after. Uh, and then it might be two months before we release another one because it's not really being used as a podcast. Right. Think for the British people here. Think Coronation Street and EastEnders, right? You would never... There's never an episode missed. They don't do it when they feel like it or when the, when the actors are feeling okay to do it. It gets recorded every damn week. It gets published every damn week. I think it does. I mean, I don't know. A long time since I've watched it, but you know what I mean. Um, consistency. People have to know when to expect your podcast because they'll build it into their routine. If my audience know that I release on 3 p.m. every Wednesday, then when they're at the gym on a Wednesday night, they know the new episode's in, so they put their headphones in and listen to the episode whilst they're working out, potentially, right? Thursday morning, they're driving. You know, I always drive down to the office. If it's 45 minutes away, on the way there, I listen to your podcast every morning, Paul. On every Thursday morning, I know it's out and I listen to it. If it's not there, they're going to listen to something else. If they listen to something else, they might enjoy it more. You've lost them. You've lost your spot in their diary. Their time is critical, right? But I said before, I think lack of consistency is a symptom, not a root cause, right? And the symptom, the, the root cause for lack of consistency is a lack of process, right? People get into podcasting because it's a shiny object they want to do. They don't really plan what they want to do properly. First week, they just do it because let's just get it done and out there. And I applaud that, right? That is brilliant. Right attitude. Get it out there because done is better than perfect. Don't wait for perfect. Just get it out there. But week two, when you come back to do that again, build yourself a process. Write it down. Put it on a tracker. Create an Excel spreadsheet, whatever that looks like, of what you're doing this week to create your podcast. Because at some point, you're either going to want to outsource the production and editing, maybe. You're going to hand it over to another team member or you're going to go away for two weeks and forget the process, right? I do this still. 37, 38 episodes in, we went away for two weeks at the end of the summer holidays. I came back after the two weeks off and I sat down to record, edit an episode. I recorded it fine, went to edit and I was like, can't remember what I'm doing. <laughs> it's only two weeks, right? It's madness. So... There are a lot of steps involved in editing your podcast each week, producing it, getting it out there, distributing it, creating posts. If you're going to go to the effort of creating a podcast in one week only, create that tracker so that you can follow it each week. Make sure that you're consistent, your standards are consistent, and you can also see where your process can be optimized, right? Maybe a couple of weeks in you want to kind of think about where am i spending the most of my time here and is there a way to make this more efficient because if your podcast isn't efficient and productive you're not going to keep it up because it's painful 
it's hard. It's not as easy as people make it make you believe. But as we discussed last week, there are absolute troves of treasure hidden within running a podcast. So like I can't recommend it enough. As a business, I said this last week, as a business, it is the number one marketing channel for me now. Number one marketing channel. And I don't ever talk about my business on it. <laughs> All right, it's so simple and wholesome and nice. And it's the way content should work. Because all we're doing is offering support and advice to people who are in our in our space. I'm learning, they're learning. The guests get a chance to promote themselves, so they're happy. And as we go along, some of the people we talk to will be naturally either curious about being a customer of ours or a partner, or I can connect them with people who in my network who can be good customers, partners, or you know, colleagues, network, whatever. Like it's about having that, creating that community as you go. So lack of consistency, build out a process as you go, refine that process, work on making it efficient, remove the kinks from it, find where your blockers are, where you take the most time to do things and ask yourself, is there a tool, a person or a tactic that will help me do this faster and more efficiently? And if you are stuck, ask someone. Podcasters are quite an uh, outspoken, generous community. We, uh, as a podcast host, I love helping other people who run their podcasts. I love giving bits of advice to, you know, like, have you tried this? Have you tried that? This tool over here is great for that. This tool over there. And not all the tools cost a fortune, right? Like some of them are relatively inexpensive. Right. <clears throat> I want to check. I don't think there is any, but if there are any questions or opinions or ideas before we shoot off, I would love to know. Now's your opportunity. Put your hand up and ask a question. If you've got a burning desire to know an answer on podcasting, I'm not going to keep this section open for ages because I think we're good. I found last week the majority of people, because of the time we've put this on, most people watched it on their dinner breaks an hour or so later. Um, so if that's you, if you know, you're busy during the day and you're watching this back tonight or tomorrow when you've got more hours, that's fine. That's absolutely cool. Still drop your notes in the comments. If there's anything you'd like to ask, it's down there. If you want to email me, it's paul at javelincontent.com. Happy to answer your questions privately also, or just drop me a DM on LinkedIn. No problem whatsoever. Perfect. Right, I'm going to end this stream here rather than rabbit on for the remaining three minutes. Hope you found it useful. I imagine if you're on the, or on the fence, you will have. Um, next week, oh, what are we doing for next week's episode? Let me just have a quick look back in my events. Um, I love being organized, sorry. Um, next week, we're gonna look at getting your podcast set up. So what do you need to do before launch to get yourself ready? So we're gonna look at things like, who should you be aiming it at? How can you differentiate yourself? What assets do you need? What setup do you need? What technology might you need? And we're gonna address all of that in one episode. I'm not getting too deep in technical. We're just gonna give you the flavor of things and then if you want more support, we can look at that later down the line. Speak to you next Wednesday at half 11. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Podcasting Unlocked. This is a mini series, we're not gonna go on forever, but I do want to give you enough information to be dangerous and get out there so that you can launch your own podcast successfully and stick with it. If all of this seems like it's a little bit too much and you'd like some support from somebody who knows what they're doing, who's done it before, then I'm here at your disposal. I take on three podcast clients per month and one of those lots is currently filled. We are looking for potential clients for the remaining two. And if you just want a bit of advice, then we can certainly sort you out with that as well. Thanks for coming along. Please do spread the word. And if you know anybody that is thinking of starting their own podcast or would be a good fit, please do invite them to the show where they can come along and have their own questions answered as well. See you next week. Bye-bye.